Hey kids, glad you decided to join us today. Look around you. Is there anyone around you who is exactly like you? Even if you happen to be an identical twin, there's no one who is exactly like you. We all have different likes, abilities, and personalities. Some people are really great singers. Are you a good singer? I know that I'm not. Some people are very good listeners. Are you a good listener? I know some of you are. Some of you need to work on it. Some people are very good talkers. They can talk to anyone about anything. And I'm willing to bet that at least one of you is talking to the screen right now. You know, even though God made some people better talkers than others, today we'll hear that all of us have the responsibility to talk to people about Jesus. People can tell about Jesus, and the Holy Spirit will help them. Say that with me. People can tell about Jesus, and the Holy Spirit will help them. Jesus commanded believers to go to every part of the world and tell the good news of the gospel. The gospel is the good news about Jesus coming to the earth to be the Savior. Jesus' command is our Bible verse today. Let's read it together. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Acts 1.8. Jesus came for every person. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are great and your love is amazing. Thank you for the Bible so we can learn more and more about you. Please help us to tell others what we know about Jesus. It's in his holy name that we pray. Amen. All right. Remember what happened at the Mooseberry Academy last week? They're in a fundraising competition with the Gooseberry Academy and Gooseberry has never lost a competition. Plus, Lennis has a twin brother, Tannis. Let's see how things are going with the fundraiser. So our school, Mooseberry Academy, is in a mission fundraising competition with another school, Gooseberry Academy. The school that raises the most money for missions will get to pick a student to go do missionary work over the summer. We're having a meeting to see how much money each person raised. And oh, did I mention that Lannis' twin brother Tannis goes to Gooseberry? And Lana says he's never lost at anything. These are the chronicles of the Mooseberry Masterclass and the exceptional and very, very, very gifted students who attend, and also Alex. When asked the question, how do we raise money, I went to science for the answer. After some heavy duty math, I came up with an equation that states, persistence presence with no vocalization indicates an inevitable offering of financial compensation. Simply put, if I stand in one place holding a money pail with my mouth shut long enough, eventually someone will give me money. And I was right. Amazing! How much did you raise? $3.26. And a button. Ha! <laughs> Pitiful. You guys should have left me in charge. I would have made sure we won. I tried something completely different. I just told people that we had to beat another school, that our reputation was on the line, and it weighs way more money than Jasper. $8.62, and two buttons. $11.88. Oh, look out, Gooseberry. Try $12.88. I didn't actually fundraise a dollar, I just found it. So I, I had the $5 raised, but then Sock and I did a comedy show to raise more money. And we lost the five bucks. The show was so bad, the audience made us pay them. That checks out. I asked my grandparents for some money, and they gave me 10 bucks. They're so nice. I didn't even have to tell them what it was for. Lame. How much did you raise, Stephanie? Um, nothing. Did anyone else in the School of Geniuses figure out a way to raise a lot of money? I barely talked about money. But I raised $224 and six buttons so far. Wait, how did you know what to say? Well, I read the Bible, so I know it's true. But then I prayed that I wouldn't say the wrong things. Then I prayed I'd say the right things. Then I prayed anything I said that wasn't from God, they would forget. It was the Holy Spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit does. The rest of us spend all of our time developing clever ways to raise money without actually telling people why it was important. I think we have a new plan. Make this about Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit for help talking about him. 
Have any of you ever decoded a secret message? I have a message for you to decode. Can anyone read this? This is a special code called Morse code. Dots and dashes stand for different letters. For example, one dot and three dashes equals the letter J. Do you see the code for a letter J on the poster? One dot all by itself stands for the letter E. Three dots equals the letter S. You could probably guess that two dots and a dash equals the letter U. This is a very important message. It says Jesus. That was fun to decode, but do you think God wants us to keep the news about Jesus a secret? Well, of course not. We should tell everyone what we know about Jesus. Let's hear a Bible story about a man named Paul. Paul told lots of people about Jesus. We're going to be in Acts 15 today. Paul and his friend Barnabas had been missionaries for a while. God sent them to many places to tell people who lived there about Jesus. Because of Paul's message, many people chose to believe that Jesus is God's Son. We'll pick it up in chapter 15, verse 36. After some time had passed, Paul said to Barnabas, Let's go back and visit the brothers and sisters in every town where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they're doing. Barnabas agreed. But Barnabas wanted to take John Mark, but Paul didn't want to take him because John Mark had left them on one of their other trips. So Barnabas took John Mark with him to Cyprus. Paul chose Silas, and they traveled through Syria to Cilicia. They helped the churches wherever they went. Paul met a young man named Timothy while in the city of Lystra. Timothy was the son of a Greek father and a believing Jewish mother. People spoke well of Timothy. So Paul and Timothy traveled through towns encouraging believers. The number of believers grew and grew. More people believed each day. The Holy Spirit guided Paul and the men as they traveled. One night, Paul received special instructions from God, and we read about that in chapter 16, verse 9. During the night, Paul had a vision in which a Macedonian man was standing and pleading with him, cross over to Macedonia and help us. Paul and his friends left immediately and set out for Macedonia. They knew that God wanted them to preach to the people there. They traveled to several towns in Macedonia and delivered the good news about Jesus. Jesus said to tell the world about him. He told his followers to share the gospel with people who lived near and far away. Jesus said to tell the whole world that God sent him to be the Savior. You know, it might be hard to believe, but you walk past people every day who've never heard that Jesus loves them. They need someone to tell them that God sent his son to be the Savior. Who can you tell this week? Maybe it's a neighbor or a friend from school. It might be, even be your parents or grandparents. Be on the lookout for someone you can tell about Jesus. You know, right now you're watching this video because there's a virus out there that's keeping us apart. This virus spreads from one person to another and we're helping to stop it by staying away from each other. The virus can't get from me to you if we're not close to each other. You know, telling others about Jesus works in much the same way as the virus, but in a really good, awesome way. For example, if I tell two people, and they each tell two people, how many people have heard the gospel? Well, six. The more people hear the gospel, the more it spreads. This is you. You tell two people, they tell two people, and they tell two, and they tell two, and, they and next thing you know, look how many people have heard the gospel. During this coronavirus outbreak, we need to physically stay away from everyone to help people stay healthy. But with the gospel, it's the opposite. We have to reach out to everyone to help people become spiritually healthy. Let's take a look at our Bible verse one more time. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Now, let's swap the word Jerusalem for Greensboro, Judea for North Carolina, and Samaria for the United States, and then say the Bible verse. You ready? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you, and you will be my witnesses in Greensboro, in all North Carolina, and the United States, and to the end of the earth. <laughs> Great job, everyone. 
So how can we put this into practice? Well, here's one way. This video that you're watching right now, share it with someone. Have your mom or dad send the link to one of your friends or a bunch of your friends. Just because we're stuck inside our houses doesn't mean we can't share the gospel. Jesus gave us a big job to do. He said that we should tell the whole world about him. That's a lot of people. Let's talk to some kids about how they obey the command to share the gospel. Have you ever told someone about Jesus? What happened? A few months ago, I took a middle school mission trip to Nashville for our church, and we did, we, um, we did like, we went, we kind of like went with Shower Up, and we um, went around and we talked to the homeless. Maybe like a bully at your school or? Um, family and friends, and just see if they can probably believe. I've told my neighbor, and she started going to a church. I could tell my family, because they don't know much about Jesus. I could tell my friends. I could tell anybody about Jesus. I have told a few people about Jesus, some of my friends, who I wasn't sure if they went to church or not. And I was just like, hey, we have a church. It's Rolling Hills. It's great. You should, you should try it out sometime. And um, I just felt good after I did it. I felt like well, maybe they'll come. Maybe there's a possibility that they will become Christians and they will love God. What advice would you give to someone who is nervous to share the good news about Jesus? I would tell them to not be afraid. You could give them a Bible verse from the Bible. I would tell them, don't be afraid. Be, have courage and speak about Him. That um, they, if they believe, and God and Jesus, then He can help guide you through it so they won't be nervous. Um, just to tell them just to go for it because Jesus is a great thing and He's the one who gave us life. Sometimes telling people about Jesus can feel a little scary. What if you say the wrong thing or the person doesn't want to listen? You know, Jesus didn't say it would always be easy. In fact, Jesus knew we would need help. That's one reason God sent His Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us and gives us power to follow Jesus' command. You know, there are people around you every day who don't know about Jesus. Some people may have heard of Jesus, but they don't know how much He loves them. Other people may have never heard about Jesus at all. It's our job to tell them. Will you tell someone about Jesus this week? Ask God to send someone your way who needs to know about Jesus. Then. Don't stay quiet. Tell that person the best news ever. Jesus loves you, and He is the Savior. People can tell about Jesus, and the Holy Spirit will help them. Say that with me one more time. People can tell about Jesus, and the Holy Spirit will help them. I'm glad you joined us today. Be sure to tell someone about what you learned, and invite them to watch this video. I hope to see you coming up on Wednesday for Elevate. In the meantime, be nice to your parents, be nice to your brothers and sisters, Keep washing your hands. We'll see you guys soon.